were saying and not speaking about it. Information meeting for the uh, potential of having the zip code 102 changed to a different zip code so that your uh, mailing addresses for those uh, residents and businesses would be read Bellstown, New Hampshire, in a different zip code. And of course, uh, 03045 would be the uh, new zip code. This was an effort that was first initiated 10 or 11 years ago. It was a survey at that time of the postal patrons. The survey resulted in um, not adopting the zip code change. The process of having the zip code change is only allowed to be initiated once every 10 years. So here we are again. Back in February 2011, the selectmen listening to several years of questions and concerns from the residents with problems that they've had because their residents are associated with Manchester. The selectmen petitioned and wrote a letter to the postal officials saying we would like to have the 102 addresses split out of the West Manchester become a different zip code such that their, their addresses would be false uh, That effort was a letter from the selectmen to the postal officials in February. We received back a uh, no, it's not going to happen. But we were allowed to appeal this decision and later in the summer we did appeal it. The answer then came back that we will consider making this change. The decision to actually make the change is going to be based on a survey of all the mail patrons, mail postal patrons in the one or two area of Boston. We anticipate that that survey will be distributed in April, and we'll hear some more about that moments. It's the results of that survey that will determine whether we will have a, a, a Nardville residence in 102, will have an address for the Bells Town, or you will remain in Manchester. Is that decision important? Um, well, some, quite a few residents feel it, it is important. I know that there are business representatives here tonight and they would prefer to remain associated with the address of Man uh, Manchester. There's uh, no easy solution to be away. However, we select them. We're trying to listen to, in this case, problems that the residents have had and trying to solve them. This, as we, this is a simply a question and answer period. I have a, some prepared questions you all had on the handout. To facilitate this meeting, I'm going to go down through the questions, have them answered, and then if, if there's questions along that subject line, like my first questions, how the actual process of the survey will be conducted. If there's any questions further along that line, that's the point to speak up. And then I'll go into the second half of the question and answer period, assuming that the vote of the survey is affirmative and the zip code is going to change, then what is that after the process of dates and how is it conducted and what information the residents and businesses need to know at that point. I would like this meeting tonight to be a question and answer period. It's not a deliberative session where you're going to, you, you, could, you could speak in favor or not in favor of this exercise. That's going to be done for the, the vote down to the post office survey. This is, we're trying to provide information here so when that survey comes out, you can have the necessary information to respond to the survey. Post the survey. Um, my 
right, we have, uh, well, I'm going to start with uh, Mark. Raise your hand, please. Mark Richard, he's a postmaster at Church Street in Ballstown, 03045. To his right is the Kirsten, Christian Kierman. She is the operations manager for Manchester. The authority I understand for zip code issues for this particular region. Um, Kathy Ball, town clerk near Lumpy, is the information technology person in the town hall. And we have Chief O'Brien, fire department, at the other end, Chief uh, Sullivan. They're going to both speak at the end dealing with community issues. Sui Russo, town administrator, and the assistant town administrator. If uh, so, uh, let's get started, and we'll go right into these questions. Dealing with the survey is uh, who actually conducts the survey. Will it be the post office management? and then we'll proceed, if the survey says yes, we'll proceed with the zip code change. Um, if the survey says no, then everything will stay status quo. Um, what else is on the list? Who, who develops the questions or what type of questions could we expect to see? The survey is a generic standard survey. It basically is going to outline, do you want this, yes or no, when you answer it. Uh, we certainly welcome input from the town and um, we'll, you know, base the survey upon the input. We'll take that input under consideration as far as how we're, we're trying to keep this basic in general as, as it can be. And uh, who's going to analyze the results? The results are going to end up in Portland, Maine. The, re the return address for the survey is going to a Kathy Rakowski, who is our manager. Well, they, she changed her title, but it used to be manager of consumer affairs. Uh, her title has changed, consumer but same, same job. And so they're all going to go to her. And she will uh, break down exactly how many surveys we received, whether in the yays and the nays. And in what fashion will the results of the survey be announced? We discussed that today. Any public release or you know, certainly the town? We expect that either Kathy, first of all, will we'll respond to you and Sue and the staff at the town. And then probably be published by our public relations people, probably Tom Rizzo out of Portland, Maine, uh, who does most of our press releases. And he will probably then release it to maybe Manchester Union leader, Goffstown News, uh, Bedford Bulletin, whoever it may interest. Uh, but I don't anticipate, I don't have a date on when that information is going to be released. We would like it all done. We're going to send the surveys out first week of April, hopefully second week, the latest. Have everything done by May 1st to make the announcement. But don't hold those dates to, you know, to me. But that's our target, is May 1st. Yep. Questions on the survey process? Yes, sir. Who's paying for the survey? We are. We're paying for the survey, the mailing, the research. All of it will be through the post office? Absolutely, yes. yes. And it will go to resident 
731 Mass Road. I'm just using a fictitious address, I hope. I don't want to be singling anybody out. It'll just be resident to that address. And then there'll be a return envelope inside to get it back to us. Do we have to put a stamp on this? <laughs> Claude. <laughs> you, yes. <laughs> if there's 1,000 respondents, 501 vote for 0305 and 499 vote for 03102, is that the deciding factor? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> yep. yep. yes. There's no swaying of it. The, the people, this is a service that we are offering to, to the opportunity for all customers in Pennardville to voice their opinion. And we're going to go with the majority. Will there be a comment area on that survey or just a yes or no? Probably just yes or no. Comments really aren't going to do us any, aren't going to sway us anyway. Well, the survey that was sent out by the town of Boston said yes or yes. <laughs> there was no no. no. And the Postal Service is unbiased in this Absolutely. decision. Really, we just want to give the customers of Pernardville what they want. If they want a Goffstown zip code and um, street, city, state zip line, or if you want to keep the Manchester 03102, that's fine. It, it doesn't affect us either way. And we'll make the appropriate changes. Absolutely. Let me clarify this. You did say that the town will look at the survey before it's sent out. No. All right, what happened the last time, 10 years ago, there were two questions asked for one answer on the survey. I don't know if you people have ever seen it. I had him in my desk for the longest okay. time. I... But you remember what it was like. It was skewed. It was wrong. It was, and so it would be nice if somebody else would look at it to see what it was sent out. I mean, know. Mark and I will have input in the survey, and certainly we welcome the town's input okay. in the one survey. One question, one answer. And we'll try to make it as basic as possible. Thank you. I just wanted to confirm. The results are based only on the return. Exactly. Right. Yes. So someone who doesn't return is just discounted. Right. right. So we're anticipating mailing 1250, 1250 of them. If only uh, 500 people respond, the majority out of that 500 will be the deciding factor. And I think when we did this 11 years ago, we only got a couple hundred responses. Right. And it was about 62% that was in favor of staying with Manchester 03102. Yes, uh, I wanted to know if you would have a place on the return for address, name, and address to control that one person, one vote. I mean, they can always put it on the, you know, the return address on the envelope. Will it, will it, will it be a mandatory space on the survey fill out? The one of the concerns was, for the lack of a better term, ballot stuffing or stuff in the ballot box with somebody taking a bunch of uh, surveys from other people and then, yeah, that was, it was discussed when Dave and Sue were in my office the other day. That was a concern, so, you know, but they don't have to provide it either, that's the other thing. We're not, we're not gonna, we can't mandate, you know, we can't say, we're only gonna count it if you put your address on it, and we can't do that. It's, it'll, it'll be responses that we, we get back. So you won't know who they come from? Right. That doesn't help anything. But every residence is getting one. Right. It's a husband and wife. One vote. Right. One vote. Okay. You're only getting one mail, one envelope one to mailbox. each res each mailbox. Um, then I assume the uh, the actual survey is on you know printed in some color or ink or yeah, paper that it makes it rather yeah. hard to uh, duplicate at home. Yes. If you have a six A and a six B in your home, how many mailboxes do you have? Two. You'll get two. Two servers. Every mailbox will yes, get sir. one survey. Yes. I heard that the Sandy line uh changed the other thing when it was over. You're correct. When the appeal went forward to the national headquarters of the Postal Service, we had the endorsement of Senator Aon. We had her endorsement only if St. A's was exempt. The, the campus of St. A's was exempt <laughs> from the uh, how do we become exempt? <laughs> the Postal Service had nothing to do with that letter. Nothing whatsoever. How do we become exempt? <laughs> it wasn't published, though. There was no other exemptions. 
elevated at that level. Why does St. A's get an exemption and every other business in town doesn't? They call it as a national presence. It serves, has been identified in that, you know, a Manchester address. Um, if I know the business owners will have complications with their letterheads, their invoices, business cards, other things that have to be printed, I can only imagine that that would be a hundred times greater at a college. If you so, do a you percentage, know, there's no difference in that college than my business. They have a presence greater than just the state. So if I get Kelly I ought to give us an exemption, would be okay? I believe there might have been a representative of her office here tonight, but um, if not, uh, there is there in the book. Well, yes, you can go on the <laughs> You see me after the meeting. You have the form, right? Speak to the young man over here in the white shirt. I suppose a vote no would be would be exempted for you. If you vote no. If I vote no, then Well, I mean that could count and that could be your way of saying you don't want it and maybe your vote wins. But if my vote doesn't win, why don't I get an exception, an exemption? As a business. As a business. Why don't you go on my third man? Okay, um, we've discussed information relative to only how the survey process works. If the survey comes back, no, everything else is for naught. You know, we've tried our best to help out the residents who have had concerns with this town change being identified with Charlestown. But for the rest of the meeting, let's assume the survey comes back affirmative and the zip code will change. Your city, your mailing address will change. So this next round of questions, who determines the changeover date? We will determine the changeover date. We do have a target date discussed today, somewhat set, but we're, once again, we probably won't discuss that until we hear the results of the survey. We have uh, notifications to unions to make this ch uh, change. We have to give X amount of days and things like that. So um, we're going to wait till we get the survey back before we make the, but you will be the second to know. The town will be the second to know. And it would be at least 60 days out. Yes. I'm sorry, you said 60 yeah. yes. days? At least the earliest it would be would be July 1st. After the official changeover date, how long will mail continue to be delivered under the old address? Our district policy is that if we know where it goes, we deliver it. Uh, Mark currently receives mail addressed incorrectly for the 03102 people already and has for 12 years. Yes. And he forwards it to Manchester and we get it to you. It's delayed by a day, but if we know where it goes, we get it delivered to you. So we don't have a rule as far as how long you have to change your address. We've been doing it 12 years. As Kristen said, currently I receive anywhere from 50 to 100 pieces a day. Is that correct? <laughs> that say Goffstown, New Hampshire, that really should say Manchester 03102. So I get them. My clerks have to handle them, cross off barcodes. Sometimes you get them, they're a little messy. We throw them in a priority envelope and get them over to Manchester West Station. We don't personally drive them over unless someone is going in that area. So we throw them in the mail in a priority envelope and it gets there the next day. So it's delayed by a day. And that practice will continue in reverse from 03102 to Goffstown if, the, in fact, the survey is positive or in favor. Now, I won't say positive, in favor. Um, they, the people at the clerks at 03102 will handle the mail that should say Goffstown, New Hampshire now and get it to us with a delay of a day, probably a day delay. Changing the zip code is not new in your line of work. There's many other areas in the United States that have zip code changes through the years. Does the Postal Service have a set of guidance that would be available, either distributed or maybe on internet that says, here are the things I as a resident or a business owner need to know how no. best to handle this. No. I mean, really what we'd ask if it does go through, um, 
is that you notify your banks and credit card companies and, and the people that you have utilities with and bills with so that it's not delayed by a day or two because of the address changes. But we're going to get it to you as long as we know where it goes. Compared to 10 or 12 years ago, less internet usage, but as we know today, many more people are on the internet. There's a lot of commercial firms that do queries based on zip codes. How does the Postal Service distribute realignment of zip code boundaries to the commercial world? It, Those it gets automatically updated into our database. All of our mailers and flyer people that do the flyers and things are required to update their database every 90 days. And that's how it just gets disseminated from there. I used to work in that department, and what we do is put all the information in, you know, all the streets that would be moving over, and we, on an on-off switch, let's say, and I'm going to throw July 1st out, then on July 1st, that information is free to be released to the mailers and people who are looking things up on USPS.com, uh, and, uh, yeah, we deal with a lot of companies like that, so July 1st would be the turn-on date, if that's the date that we set, uh, then information will not be available to the mailers till that date, but then they have 90 days. If their cycle is July 4th, then they're golden. They're going to get the information within a week. Uh, but they have to do it, you know, it depends on what their last cycle was when they did it. If they did it April 1st, then they'll do it uh, July 1st. Thank you. Um, okay, I live in 102. I'm not at home for a certified letter. I'm not at home for delivery of a package. What am I going to do when I get that postcard that says, Pick up something. Come visit. <laughs> You're going to have to unfortunately travel to 11 Church Street, Citizens Bank Building. That's where we're located, right behind the town hall. If you haven't been out there, uh, we're open from 5:15 a.m. till 5:15 p.m. Someone is in the building as early as 5:15 a.m. So you can retrieve a certified letter, a package I need that we couldn't leave out because it was raining or we didn't have a safe place to leave it. You'll have to drive to the village to pick it up. Where do we you go to West Station, you go to uh, Lammy Drive or Lance Lane now. I've never had to do it. So okay, yes, if, you have a certain, if you're not home for something that requires a signature, or for some reason if the weather's bad and we couldn't leave a package outside, currently you're going to 10 Lance Lane, which is off of Daniel Plummer. Oh, yeah. okay, thanks. Uh, Lammy Drive does not have post office boxes for postal that is Bay correct. Is now, do you have post office boxes? We have plenty of post office boxes available. We probably have about 280 boxes that are currently available. And I spoke to, I know we discussed this earlier in the week, I spoke to the postmaster of Manchester who's responsible for the Bedford station, which would be the next closest post office boxes to you on that far end of town. Uh, Bedford station has plenty of boxes available also. I spoke to him this morning. Uh, prices range as little as... Well, I say as little, class as little, $100 for a 12-month for a period for the, I can't speak for the Manchester boxes. Do you, do we don't know up there? No. Uh, $100 for the smallest box, up to $510 for the largest box for a year payment, payable in increments of three months, six months, or 12 months. So to answer your question, should the survey go through, you could always rent a P.O. box with the 03102 zip code? No, you can't. Well. No P.O. boxes in 03102. No, oh, 03110. 03110, which yep. is Bedford. It's at the Bedford Station in T-Bones, where T-Bones Plaza is. That's where the Bedford Post Office is, and uh, they have plenty of P.O. boxes there available. Any other concerns if this were to go forward for a change? Yes, sir. My, my only thing with this is not only are you changing the zip code, you're changing the town, and that's where I think the problem is going to come in. I moved here from Manchester. I didn't know what to do when I went here. I'm physically in Goffstown. I'm legally Manchester. I'm part of Panarca. Okay? Try and tell your customers where you're going with those three factors. I mean, if this goes through, what do I call myself? Manchester, Goffstown? I call myself Goffstown. Now people are wondering where I am until they can find it through Bing. Google, Yahoo, those are concerns that are new that were not here 10 or 12 years ago. And as Mark explained, hopefully within 90 days after the realignment is released to the commercial firms that do 
database, you know, queries based on zip codes. When people do queries for a business based on a, a town name or a zip code, it'll, it'll show where you are. Well, it's just a concern when you're changing the name of your town as well. Uh, well, well always we're, been we're, we're, we're changing well, the name I know of your that. Address. I'm saying from an address standpoint, yes, you are. Question up there. Yep. Um, I'm sorry, I came in a little late and I just, I guess I'm trying to understand the benefits. You know, what is, is it police and fire that this is benefiting? Is it just, it came up from the 10 years and we're asking for it? Or how did this come about? The town is requesting it. The Postal Service gains absolutely nothing with this. Okay. We are impartial. Either way, I'm happy. I've got, I, I love my job and I was explaining this to Sue and and Dave, yesterday, that when you love what you do, you never work another day in your life. Yes. And believe me, that's how I feel. I, I started have to love my job. Meeting, uh, which you missed. I really don't want to take up a considerable amount of time why we're why various people are on one side or the other. Yep. So what are the benefits of changing it? I'm sorry. What are the benefits of changing it to the Gosstown zip code? Let's we uh, had planned to do this after the postal questions were out of the way. We didn't want to hold it up here all night. Um, if you look at the handouts, the last section is community interest, and that's when we'll be dealing with that, okay? All right, I came in late. Are there any more postal questions? If not, we can move on to that. You have more, Dave? Dave? Mark, did we answer all the ones on the table? Yes, sir. I'm glad. They've, they've answered my question. Are there any other questions? Uh, just dealing with how the survey is going to work, or how the, how you best handle change of address activities. We can move on to what I call community issues. I'm going to cover the first one, dealing with the uh, school boundary assignments. There are no changes with school boundaries. The superintendent of the schools told me yesterday. That we're greatly help her though. We still have people who live on the Manchester side of the boundary line. They bring their child to Bartlett saying, I'm here to register my child. This school has a Manchester address. Only to be told you're at the wrong school and they'll redirect them to whichever the proper elementary school is in Manchester. Likewise, we have parents who Newly move into Golfstown <coughs> residents, but of course they have a Manchester address. They don't, for one reason or another, they don't bring their child to register in Bartlett. They go to some school in Manchester, and then of course redirect it back. I would suspect that most of those situations occur with people who are tenants and what sort of information their landlord give them upon moving other than this is your address and then they're left to figure out which side of the town line they're on. But there is no impact of the actual school. It's just it makes the registration smoother for those who are registering their child for the first time. The impact on the 911 system. Chief O'Brien is our expert at that line. Good evening. Uh, I also have the, uh, the I wear also wear the fire helmet, but I also wear the, the hat for the town as the uh, 911 liaison. Uh, what that means, I'm, I'm the person that when there's a address mix-up or address address uh, correction that's needed in the town of Goffstown for the 911 database, they're calling they're calling me to find out what's going on. Yeah, typically when it comes to address corrections, it's involving the folks in Pernardville in the 03102 area. Yeah, just to kind of step back, uh, the, reason, the reason why I'm going to kind of give you this information, it's not necessarily whether, you know, whether, you know we, don't, we don't go to your mailbox, we're going to your house if there's an emergency. So uh, please consider what, we're, what, what both myself and the police chief have to offer tonight when considering uh, your thoughts on, on uh, changing the zip code and how that would impact. Just to kind of step back about 10 years ago or so, back when the, the state went to a statewide 911 system, 
what they did at the time was they had uh, one single uh, telephone provider that managed the database that that functioned under, and that was Verizon. Okay, they kept they were the keeper of the database. So whenever somebody changed an address, changed a phone number, um, they they knew where you were, and they worked in conjunction with the 911 folks in Concord and uh, said, okay, uh, someone on, uh, let's say, Large Street just rented an apartment, and uh, they just moved in, and here they are. They're on uh, Large Street, apartment uh, 3, and they're in Goffstown, even though they have a Manchester address. We know that because it's in the system. What has happened over time is Verizon gave up the reins to... Fairpoint, and gave up through the uh, through FCC rules and laws that that went out through the the, the government is it, it opened up the airwaves to, to any company to come through, so that released that database to any company that's out there. So now you have Fairpoint, you have Comcast, you have Vonage, you have other internet providers out there like Magic Jack. Uh, they're all out there, and. The 911 system in the state of New Hampshire relies on these folks to, to tumble in the data into the New Hampshire system. So when you happen to call 911, your address will show up and it tells the, the 911 operator who they need to call if you need an ambulance, a police department to show up, or the fire department to show up. Okay? What's happening now is with a lot of these providers is they're really not really careful with that data. Uh, Fairpoint, uh, I give Fairpoint kudos. They're, they're, they're trying to take up where, where Verizon left off, and they, they put a lot of staff hours into trying to maintain uh, your, your numbers in your database. Out of experience, I'm not going to pick on any one particular company over another, but like, for example, the internet usage ones and Comcast, they typically, when they pull down the data or push in the data into the state, state uh, 901 database, they're pushing in their billing address. Okay, so when you get a bill from Comcast, Vonage, or whoever it is, it says what? Manchester. Okay, so this is where the problem lies for the emergency service and public safety folks, is there's approximately 36 duplicate streets that are in Pernardville that reoccur in Manchester. And I don't want to get into anecdotal situations, but we've had situations in the past where there'd be a medical emergency, a fire, a police emergency, where time is lost because you call 911, 911 operator in Concord or in Laconia says, you're in Manchester, boom, they send it to Manchester dispatch, and they dispatch the units to that similar duplicate street in Manchester. They get to that address in Manchester, realize it's there's no problem here. And then they call back to, to 911 and say, can you look at this again? Because, you know, we, we went there and, and we couldn't <coughs> find a medical emergency there. Then they talk to the, the resident again and say, where are you? Are you sure you're in Manchester? Well, yes. And that ward that could be, well, we might be in Goffstown. And then we get started. And so there could be significant delay. And we've had situations uh, where there has been significant delay. So that, I want to let you know that to keep that in mind when when considering this, because again, we're talking about benefit or, or weighing out the pros and cons in this particular set, um, you know, where, where do we stand? When we talk about addresses, we, we talk about streets, okay? So, for example, Mass Road, there's a Mass Road in Manchester. There is confusion at that level all the time. And what we, what usually happens as a 9-1 liaison to Goffstown in, in in, the, in Concord, is we're very just we're, we're re reactionary. What usually happens is you call 911 and there's a mistake that's been made because of it. Manchester sends the ambulance to Large Street in Man Manchester, the mistake is realized, and then the proper agency say, Goffstown Fire is now dispatched to handle the emergency. I then get the phone call the next morning by the 911 folks and say, we need to fix this because we have a problem, okay? A lot of times the dispatcher is the one that, that starts the correction process at the police department and then I finish it by, by, by confirming that that physical address is in Goffstown. 
it's reactionary. It, a lot of times, we can, not one knows there's 36 streets that have duplicate names in Manchester. But whenever uh, the database is pushed into into 901, they can't. They typically don't pick up on it right away. And our fear is it's going to happen again. Somebody's going to die. We don't want. To. Thank you, Chief. I'm going to ask Sir Bruce to talk a little bit about lost revenue, which is a concern at the town level. Because if, if revenue does not come into the town through licensing, fees, franchise, contracts, it's made up, that revenue is lost, it's made up for through the property taxes. So, so tell us what type of revenue might be lost. You had examples of lost the town of Gosstown realizes a 5% franchise fee with Comcast, which provides cable services in town. By the way, St. A's just is not a subscriber of Comcast, so we're not losing any revenue to St. A's. Um, but when, during franchise negotiations, which goes on another one once every 10 years, we always say, let's check the Pinardville uh, addresses, those people with Manchester, 03102. Are we realizing those revenues or are they going somewhere else? Ten years ago, we were assured by, I think it was AT&T that, at that time, providing the service, that all of your addresses were in there and coded with a suffix that it was coming to Goffstown. When we went through the franchise renewal this year, we asked for an audit and they came back. We gave them every address, of every property we had in Manchester, New Hampshire, 03102, and they came back and that said, Currently, there are 187 households who were sending that money to Manchester, not to you. We are still waiting for a correction, and that was three months ago. So we have no control over the database of vendors, much like uh, the chief pointed out with all the different phone vendors. When it comes to our franchise, our 5% franchise fee, we're not realizing it all. Um, some of it's going to um, Manchester. We. They can't go back 10 years because approximately seven years ago um, was when they saw, uh, Comcast took ownership. It was AT&T prior to that. So they can't do a forensic audit back when AT&T owned it. So we have no number, a real number, in terms of what our lost revenues were, but we know there are lost revenues for this past year of 187 households. Um, that's one of our lost revenues. I'd like to also, um, right, in a minute, ask Kathy to come up and she can tell you she collects, other than the property tax collector in Gosstown, she is the second largest revenue collection office in town hall with the motor vehicles, dogs, and UCCs and other types of revenues that come in. We also uh, just get errors in terms of, uh, we got a probate notice the other day um, and probate court has a real estate listed for someone who passed away who lived in Gosstown with 03102 address, they list the real estate in Manchester. So again, we have to correct these every time we get something from another agency, whether it's government or private agency, we take it upon ourselves to correct it. Um, Kathy, would you tell them um, incidents that you have seen? Again, it's hard to quantify because Kathy doesn't control the state's database. Last year, the town clerk's office took in $2.3 million in motor vehicle registrations. Um, in addition to that, we accept money for UCC filings from the state of New Hampshire. We do dog licenses, and our office also takes care of election issues. The state motor vehicle office on their driver's licenses only requires someone to have their mailing address on the front of their driver's licenses. And they went and changed their format on the driver's licenses because it used to have a legal address that showed in the corner of the license and a mailing address also. So if someone could see that you truly lived in the town of Goffstown, but you had a Manchester 03102 mailing address if you lived in the Penarnville area. Now the state does not require someone to have their legal address in the license. On the new license format on the back side, it gives residents an option to put their legal address the state cannot mandate them to do that. So what happens is that my office throughout the year 
at some point sees or corresponds or talks to most of the people in the community and we deal with a lot of new folks that are coming in that are calling to find out where do I come, where do I go, but I've got a Manchester 03102 address, you know, I'm dealing with the town of Gosstown, someone told me to come here. We also see the reverse side of the thing, that we see people that have lived in the Pinardville area for seven years and just found out from their neighbor that they live in Gosstown and they've been going to Manchester registering their car for all this period of time, which means that we're losing the revenue. And when those folks appear, they bring in a mailing renewal form that was issued by the city of Manchester that was pulled through the state of New Hampshire Motor Vehicle um, Records Center. When someone fills out a records change form for the state of New Hampshire, it says, what is your mailing address and what is your legal address? The folks that we see that are coming in, that are, we're trying to help them fill out a records change form, most of the people we have to go back and ask them to fill out what their legal address is and put that they live on Plummer Street, Gosstown 03045, but their mailing address is Plummer Street, Manchester 03102. If that's not done correctly by the resident, when the state gets that information, they put them in as Manchester, Manchester. Now when their renewal notices are pulled from the state to send out the reminders for them to pay for their motor vehicle registrations, they're issued by the city of Manchester. The city of Manchester has their own computer system and anyone that sends in electronically to renew, Manchester just automatically takes their money because it came from Manchester and it was in their database. If you physically go to City Hall in Manchester as a Pernardville resident, trying to register your vehicle saying I live in Manchester 03102. If you live on Mass Road, the clerks have a list and they say, no, here's the cutoff number. You need to go to Goffstown. And we see those folks occasionally. But the other people that aren't on the main road and the clerk doesn't recognize that they really are in the town of Goffstown, they accommodate the person and they just take their money. I don't have a way of identifying how much revenue the town is actually losing to the city of Manchester because the state doesn't have a system that lets me do any type of overlap. I've talked to the director of motor vehicle, I've talked to the head of their IT up there, I've engaged Neil Funky, the head of our IT department, um, he's gone through resource groups that he has. There is not a way that the state provides for us to do an overlap. The state cares about getting their money. They're not looking out for what money the municipality is bringing in. So I have a real concern because I can't come to the selectmen or come to the folks in the community and say, I'm losing $100,000 a year, I'm losing $250,000 a year. I don't have a number for you. When I was trying to find some sort of number to give you of what potentially we might be losing, I started looking at certificate of title applications that come in done by motor vehicle dealers for the month of January and February of this year. In January we had 21 new vehicles that were purchased by residents and the certificate of title applications were done at the dealership by 17 dealers. If those registrations had gone directly to the city of Manchester because it listed them as a legal, as a mailing address of Manchester 03102, all the dealers left the, the line blank that said, if you have a different legal address, state it here. All 21 of our residents of the community signed the form agreeing that it was correct information. And the amount of money that we would have lost for the town of Gosstown was $3,522 in the month of January. When I looked at February, I had 26 dealer applications that were filled out for title. Only one of them listed the legal address is Gosstown 03045. Again, 17 different dealerships in the area, $5,175. So if I took a high figure and a low figure like this and I said, okay, six months of each of those amounts, I'd be looking at over $52,000 that potentially I could lose to Manchester. Now you can say that those particular residents are going to know to come to Gosstown. But what happened is that last year a bill was passed that is referred to as the EBR program, Electronic Vehicle Registration. This is going to give people that are purchasing new vehicles the opportunity to go to their automobile dealer, 
buy a vehicle and say that I want to pay to get my registration done through you, the dealer. I don't want to come to town hall. This is a great convenience for people. And what's going to happen is that wherever the person, whatever the person signs as their address is the town or the city where the money is going to go to. I have a huge concern about these examples that I stated you, to you, that if everyone chose the convenience of doing this through the dealer, that all that money would have got sent to the city of Manchester and Gosstown would not have, have received that money. In an effort to try to get involved in how can I correct this process, the Board of Selectmen have endorsed my participation at the state level on um, a committee that is looking into the RFP and we're going to be able to see if we can, um, you know, get this, this fixed. The true fix to this is going to be to change the zip code. If all of the motor vehicle registrations were coming through with Goffstown 03045, we would definitely be receiving our money. We try to help out residents that come in that are new to the community and explain to them that they should go back to their insurance companies and let their insurance company know that they physically reside in the town of Goffstown because Goffstown has cheaper insurance rates for homeowners and, and for car insurance. Important. <laughs> okay? Cheaper insurance and rates in Goffstown. I, I spoke to one of our budget committee representatives about this concern and he did a little research and came back to me and said that his random sampling of insurance companies that he, people were talking about a 5 to 10 percent difference in their premium between what they would pay as a resident of Gosstown or a resident of the city of Manchester. So this is a significant amount of money to people within their households with, with multiple vehicles. Dog licensing. Um, it's, it's a subject that we must attend to. We have to prove that dogs have rabies. We're notified by the vets throughout the state, by law, that someone got a rabies shot. Once we get that notification, we must mail out a notice to them saying that they must register their dog within a certain period of time. What's happening is that the information is going from vets and it's going to the city of Manchester. It's not coming to us or vice versa. It's being mixed up. And then we're out to a point, we're at a collection effort that someone doesn't show that they registered their dog. We have them in the Goffstown system, or Manchester has them in their system, and we've got folks going out spending resources of the community to try to collect $6.50 for a dog license because we don't have accurate information because people don't know where people live. Um, UCCs that Sue mentioned. UCCs are, un are uniform commercial code filings. When someone borrows money that is unsecured money, a business does a business loan and all assets of their business are being pledged to back the loan. Filings go through to the Secretary of State's office. They used to be filed at the town. Now all the filing forms go to the Secretary of State's office and they turn around and send the money back to us that's owed. We don't know that we're getting all those fees, but again, we haven't been able to determine what we're losing. So there's another revenue stream that we're losing. And the last issue I'd like to talk to you about is elections. There was a lot of uh, media attention about people going into polling locations and saying, do you have a so-and-so on your voter checklist and trying to get a ballot to vote? We had a situation at the District 5 Bartlett School that someone went in and tried to represent themselves as a person and asked, do you have you know, Joe Jones on the ballot, on, on the checklist, and they agreed to the name, they agreed to the address, and on the other side of the, uh, the rail, the ballot hander reached up to hand that person a ballot. That particular individual said, no, I'm not comfortable with not showing my ID, I'm going to go to my car and I'll be back. It turned out that it was on YouTube. Now, it was made to sound like it was the fault of the supervisors of the checklist. The supervisors of the checklist did their job and they purged everyone that was reported to them as having died prior to the elections when they created that checklist 10 days prior to the election. That particular gentleman that was asked for was on our checklist and had died more than 10 days prior to the checklist being cut off. But the reason that he still appeared on our list is because when his family went to the funeral director 
and in their grief talked about what their information was and said that their address was Manchester 03102 when they really resided legally in the town of Goffstown. That person's death record said that they lived, resided in Manchester. That information went through to the state vital records database and when it was sent out to the towns to purge people off the list that no longer were alive and entitled to get a ballot, it did not get removed from the town of Goffstown because that information got sent to the city of Manchester. So these are some of the reasons that I feel that I'd like to encourage you to change to 03045 so that we can be one community and that we can get rid of some of the confusion and make sure that we're getting all the money that we're entitled to and that we provide quality services to our residents. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Police Department, Chief Sullivan, please. Thank you. Because we're the dispatch center for the town, I had my dispatchers pull up from 2009 to 2011 the calls that we had that either went into Manchester through 911 or were physically called from the residents because the person believed they lived in Manchester. 18 of them occurred in that two year period. 18 out of 19,000 calls a year, not a big deal. Until we talk about what type of calls we're looking at. A robbery call, domestic with injury, suicidal subject and an attempted suicide, a sexual assault where the person actually went to Manchester Police to report it. Someone has been sexually assaulted goes to Manchester Police because they believe they lived in Manchester. Only to be taking the report and go, wait a minute, you need to go back to Boston. To me, that's unacceptable. Burglary in progress call, criminal threatening, medical courtesies, accident with injury, and a pedestrian accident. One of the medical calls was a drug overdose. And I don't want to get into all of the calls. This one medical call with the overdose, nine minutes between the time Manchester was dispatched, went to the address, nothing wrong here. Wait a minute, let's try Gothtown. We show up. Nine minutes between the time Manchester gets a call and by the time we dispatch somebody. That's life and death right there. And that's my concern. Okay. That, that's the issues that face us every day when we're responding. We want to go, we want to help, we have to get there correctly. Thank you. That's the information we had to present. Some of the stock questions. Do, we, do you have any other final questions on how the process will work, how the survey will work? Yes, sir. I have a couple of questions. As a taxpayer in Goffstown, I have a hard time stomaching that renters in Pennardville are going to get these mailings and have a choice, and they're not a taxpayer to make this decision. So if a, hundred, a thousand ballots go out and 500 renters reply and they want to change it, they might be here a year, two years, but the taxpayers, as a, as a taxpayer is a business or a resident, I know what you're saying. <laughs> There's no way just to say no to taxpayers, though. That's that's unfortunate. That, that concern may happen, but we're trusting the society we work in. Those people will probably do the right response. Why not just, just educate? It sounds like all this to me is education. It's one of the reasons we're holding this meeting. One I'm of the reasons about the letter went out. I'm talking about the new residents of Boston with that new aunt family. I was the post office. Somebody applies to change their address, gets that. Why not have some type of packet to send out to educate these people what they could do in these circumstances? I don't have, no, we're, we're not, we did send letters from the town hall to property addresses, because that's all the town hall has is the owner's property. We don't have the apartment resident level addresses. When I moved to town, I got nothing from town. I was just like anybody else, been here almost 10 years now, and had no information what to do, and same thing, Comcast is an issue, where's your address to get this hooked up and that hooked up. But now, you know, if you just, somebody, to, I'm not saying the town, I'm just saying somebody, it's a new residence. I guess the best answer then is to facilitate that 
Yes, there's going to be confusion in the 90 days of switch over, maybe 90 days after that. But you put yourself five years down the road from now, ten years down the road. Do we want these types of problems we've just heard to continue to roll forward year after year after year? Other than the 911 calls, yes. I, I agree with that. But and the best, all the best way from our point of view at the selectmen is that to facilitate that the tenants have an address of Gulf Town. Um, I would like to but that's it. I'd like to thank the two representatives of the Postal Service here. They're fair and unbiased. They could roll either way. And uh, I'll work this day. We'll continue to do a fine job delivering our men. Um, and once again, thank you for coming here to the information question and answer period. There will be a rep, we call it a referendum type question on the Warren, next Tuesday, would you prefer to have all of Gulfstown with one zip code? That is simply a referendum type survey question on the Warren. It does not influence their decision. Their decision is based on the results of the survey on the Why are we happy with that? Why are you happy? I'm sorry. Yes. We placed the article to help promote the, the residents' awareness of the zip code issue. It will, um, it will help. How many, how many residents have got that? 3,088, let's see, 3,000, just over 3,000 voters live in the Bartlett District. Of that, 61% of those, 1,800 and a few, 1,800 of those voters are in 102. That's just District 5. But that's the whole town of Goff. Yeah, but the whole town is going to get this. It has the reference. Yes, but we're fortunate it's all we realize that. It's on both, but ballots from Barbara School are counted in the bank counted just by themselves. And so we'll have a tabulation from the Barclay School on how those people answer the questions. And 61% of those voters have 102 addresses. So the information disseminated from the Barclay vote is the information that's going to be used, not it will be locales. It will be reported in the, the well, the returns of the town are consolidated. But we do know the returns from Barclay School. And perhaps there'll be a way for the town to disseminate the returns of Barclay School. I, it's, just, it's just that it, it, it obviously affects. That's a good point. The thank people, thank uh, you for uh, bringing people it up. People that are North Road, now it affects them obviously more than it affects the people that live on North Mass Road. Because we can't, if, if we can't bring a bell, it goes just the one district. information got disseminated between who voted where, then it's going to be a skew. It is, it's not going to be a proper survey. Well, that's not we don't need another one of those. That's not the survey to make the change. Right. Correct. Right. That's, that, that's, that's why, that's why, that's that's why, that's why, why I call it the record. That was why I was wondering why we're doing it at all. Our survey made a change. Yeah, the yes, other sir. thing to throw into that is, as a business owner and not a resident of Gobstown, I can't vote. Right. But it's not making a difference to we take none of that into account. It's then for right. your Why is it on the no. referendum if it doesn't matter? Get a sense of the community. I think it's just awareness. Sue said it's a sense of community. It's a referendum. We're able to tabulate the department returns independent of the returns from the high school here. Um, um, and I'm what do you do with that information? Publish it. We'll try to publish it in some fashion. What was the returns of Bartlett School just for that one? But remember, 61% of the potential voters are in 102. The other 39% at Bartlett are in 045. So it's, it's not a perfect correlation. Yes? Uh, I'm, I live in Grassmere, and I'm wondering if you I wouldn't be nearly as effective as having to change my address or explain to, you know, change my zip code, explain to people, but it does affect me because that is money. 
is taxes, I can get a little relief from that. And um, and I like I think it'd be a great T-shirt, Kathy. That 03045, one community. That's a good sign. That's a good T-shirt. But it does affect me. Thank you. If the survey from the post office comes back affirmative, you know, positive to change, yes, there's a lot of effort by the residents and the business owners. Um, I've been five different assignments in the military, buying and selling houses and moving. Changing banks, changing utilities, changing a lot of information on addresses every time I move. I know what residents of the town will do the same thing. Methodically you know, work through all of your responsibilities and getting things changed. Banks are perhaps right up there, number one. Credit cards. And credit cards. And then all the utilities and all the magazines that you get. Magazines, I understand, are pretty responsive. They, they improved a lot. Your, your major ones, your time, your Newsweek, your Sports Illustrated, they change practically instantly. They really do. And uh, just as a reminder, if this does go through, we will not accept change of addresses from anybody because none of you have moved. This is strictly between you and the bank, you and Sports Illustrated, to notify them. No change of addresses will be allowed. And if we do get one and it gets into the system, we will delete it. You're referring to a change of address because, form. Right, change of address form, our, our PS form 3575, which is to, noti or to notify the post office my address has changed from 741 Mass Road, Manchester to 741 Mass Road, Gosstown. That, we will not allow those. You really haven't moved your structure. You're still in the same structure. Through 911, similar to what we did with 911 numbering for years and years, it was up to the customer to notify their correspondents of their new mailing address. We will not accept any change of addresses. Then uh, I thank you for attending tonight. Thank you for your questions and your comments.